You cannot help but be aware of the changes and turmoils in the Middle East with, with respect to Egypt, Libya, and now Syria. The recent ousting of leaders in the Middle East is destabilizing the region and is endangering Israel on many fronts. Terrorists have been launching rockets into Israel over the past few days. Israel responded and tensions are very high and hot in the region. Although you haven't seen much mention of this on U.S. mainstream media, despite the fact that Israel has been a longtime ally of the U.S. There's also an upcoming vote at the U.N. General Assembly on September 20, 2011, that could vote to give the Palestinians statehood and divide the land of Israel, which was given to the Jews by God. This is a huge prophecy in the Bible that's in the process of being fulfilled. The Bible said that nations will unsuccessfully come against Israel, giving God the opportunity to display his awesome power. This video is based on an article of one man's account and interpretation of Bible scriptures pertaining to this prophecy. I found it very interesting and thought you might find it interesting also. Please share your thoughts. Take a look. What's special about Israel? The land variously called Israel in Palestine is extremely small compared to its neighbors, only 100,000 square miles. Its original Jewish occupants were scattered to the nation some 2,500 years ago, and since then it has been occupied by Assyrians, Babylonians, Persians, Greeks, Romans, Turks, and the British. Even in 1900, the population of Israel was only some 500,000. It was politically and industrially insignificant with a mix of many peoples representing some 50 languages. So why is Israel frequently in the world focused today? During the 20th century, Israel saw astounding development, especially after becoming a state in 1948. For example, from 1958 to 1965, it saw a growth of 13.6% in manufacturing, and the population grew from 0 0.5 million in 1900 to 6.5 million in 2005. It now has high-tech industry, forestry, and agricultural industries, and a highly developed infrastructure. But these facts alone are insufficient to warrant world attention. There must be a more fundamental reason. The reason for Israel's prominence today is biblical rather than political. The Bible says that God chose a special people to be his witness to the world. You are my witnesses, declare the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. And what nation on the earth is like your people, Israel? whom God went to redeem for himself as a people and to make a name for himself and to do a great thing for you, an awesome thing for your land. Isaiah 43.10 and 2 Samuel 7.23 Although the nation of Israel was scattered some 2,500 years ago, the Bible says that it will be gathered in the last days of this age. I will take the sons of Israel from among the nations where they have gone and bring them into their own land. Ezekiel 37.21 this regathering is now well underway and Israel is taking prominence on the world stage. According to prophecy, the God of the Bible will make a name for himself through Israel in the last days. The, the world will no longer be able to ignore him. Current scenario. Much of the Middle East conflict appears to be over Israel's very existence. There is intense hatred towards the state of Israel. Quote, Israel has continued too long. The battle has come in which we shall destroy Israel. End quote. President of Egypt, 1967. Quote, Israel should be eliminated from the pages of history. End quote. President of Iran, 2006. The conflict is all over occupied land and over Jerusalem. From a biblical point of view, the land of Israel was given by God to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants. The biblical injunction to Israel is to occupy the land, but embrace the foreigner in the land. The future biblical boundaries of Israel range from the river of Egypt, not the Nile, in the south, to the Jordan Valley in the east, to Hamath in the north. Clearly, the boundaries include both the Gaza Strip and the west bank of the Jordan. They also include significant parts of present-day Syria, in other words, up to Hamath and probably all of Lebanon. The bias against Israel. It is prophesied that all nations will eventually abandon support for Israel. In fact, all nations will eventually be gathered against her. This 
international bias was well summarized in a speech by Andrew Roberts, member, parliament, British House of Commons. Essentially, he argued for Israel's right to self-defense and legitimacy. Future Middle East War Bible prophecy describes two future invasions of Israel, both of which are defeated by direct action from the God of Israel. The Gog Magog invasion, the all nation invasion. Detailed studies point to two distinct ways with the Gog Magog invasion possibly at the end of the millennium reign of Christ. The Gog Magog invasion involves a confederacy of nations, particularly Iran, parenthetical Persia, Ethiopia, Put, and Gomer. Ezekiel 38, 5, and 6. Put is associated with Africa, possibly Libya. Whilst Gomer is probably identified with an Aryan group who conquered Armenia from their Ukrainian homeland. The invasion is led by Gog, which could be a special people or symbolic of anti-God forces. The invaders do not appear to reach Jerusalem, rather they fall on the mountains of Israel and in the open field. Ezekiel 39, 4, and 5. The all-nation invasion is precisely that. God says, I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. Zechariah 14, 2. Note that all nations... In other words, all world leaders attack Israel, which implies a change of policy from the U.S. or the absence of the USA. Bear in mind that the nations will be under the world government and will be vehemently anti-Christian and anti-Jewish. The principal features of this battle are the location is Armageddon or Armageddon, a reference to the ancient city of Megiddo built on a hill and located in northern Israel. The city of Jerusalem is captured. God himself fights against the world's armies. The Israelis, the tribe of Judah, also fight. The attacking armies suffer a flesh-rotting plague and are defeated. The end-time world ruler is captured. This last battle of the age sees the end of the godless world government and ushers in the, the millennial reign of Christ. Prophecy also suggests the type of weaponry used. The all-nation war could use neutron bombs since these vaporize flesh at close range. And also nuclear devices since Malachi 4 refers to a time of fierce heat when attackers will be burnt to ashes. In contrast, the Gog Magog war appears to use primitive weapons. The implications for you. End time prophecies are being fulfilled before our eyes. The emergence of a world government, the emergence of Israel, the emergence of electronic ID, and the ubiquitous climate change. You are being swept into a humanistic, godless, and potential brutal world government or new world order. Sooner or later, the system will require you to receive the mark of revelation, the ultimate electronic ID, in order to buy or sell. And because of his hatred towards the God of the Bible, Christians and Jews, the world system will conspire against Israel. National armies will be mobilized for war against Israel. You may even be asked to have some part in this invasion. The turmoil in the Middle East and the rapid emergence of Israel are signs that the invasion will take place in the foreseeable future. Within just 100 years, Israel has gone from insignificant to the vortex of the world. The significant point is that when the invasion starts, Jesus will return to earth. In fact, there is strong biblical support for the view that Christians, believers in Christ, will be taken from the earth just prior to this invasion. You will have to make an urgent decision. Who will you serve? The world government or Jesus Christ? Ezekiel 33, 1-3 the word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, speak to your people and say to them, When I bring the sword against the land and the people of the land choose one of their men and make him their watchman, and he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people, 
Then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning, and the sword comes and take their life, their blood will be on their own head, since they heard the sound of the trumpet but did not heed the warning. Their blood would be on their own head. If they had heeded the warning, they would have saved themselves. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes someone's life, that person's life will be taken because of their sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood.